Well, uh, Helen, <laughs> you said you were promising them a bam show. Bam, bam, bam. I really bam. love your mood this morning. <laughs> So we're all looking forward to a BAM show. You, you know, like when Helen. we saw that um, Timmy Dakula's music before yes. the show, the video, mm. um, titled Everything and Amen, you saw the pictures Bam. live. BAM. Bam. Everybody Bam. happy. <laughs> and the words like, oh, you know, you will on. get this, you will get that, you will get come that. On. And it was amen, amen all the way. So that's the BAM part ah, of it. Yeah. Everything good. <laughs> all right. So you're yeah, welcome back. Uh, well, uh, success and money are desired by all, male and female, no True. discrimination. And coincidentally, we get to mark the International Women's Day come Monday. Mm. So you see why Helen is so bam this morning? You can see that. <laughs> so Helen, <laughs> wouldn't it be appropriate for us to just kind of dedicate this show to the successful, hard-working women across the globe impacting lives? I'm telling you, yes, you can't do should. it any better I think we should. for us to celebrate women across the world mm. today. Mm. And so this is saying to all the women who make the world go round, um, the title for this celebration this year is Choose to Challenge. Choose to Challenge. Yes, yeah. Choose to Challenge. So okay. the women are taking a positive step forward to challenge the status quo. Mm. and get us on the and right challenge track. all stereotypes mm -hmm. existing all stereotypes, stereotypes yes yeah. and so special congratulations to our very own Ngozi Okonjo Iwala now she broke. I see why you are in this fabric today. Ah, but you left out the head tie and I didn't even <laughs> think about that you left out the signature head tie oh she's ah. made Nigeria so proud and made Nigerian women great. so so proud great congratulations, congratulations because you called Jerry Allah mm -hmm. all right so it's time to bring on our first guest Abiola Champ Salami a world class uh, performance coach well Abiola you're, you're welcome to our show can you hear me thank you thank you very yes, much yes thank you thank you for having me yes i'm feeling bam this morning You're feeling bam. Do you see? <laughs> thumbs up yeah. guys. That's, that's the way it should be <laughs> so no let doubt. me use the word bamness, yeah. bamness. <laughs> well, okay. she'll, she'll tell us what this bamness <laughs> is now so no doubt, uh, Abiola, you're... Anyway, International Women's Day in a few days, so probably we should understand that. Yeah. And thank you to you and all the women watching this and all the women out there yeah. for making the world bam. Uh, good, uh -huh. old, uh, good old women. You will pay for this word. Uh, so this quickly, bam. quickly, uh, Abiola Salami, <laughs> you're welcome again to the show. Uh, I say that no thank doubt you your, your, your tag name, Champ, would have something to do with success. But we're not going to talk about that now. Okay, we'll come back okay. to that later. But for now, I have uh, one or two questions I would want to ask. I'm not sure. I don't know about Helen. Mm. But for me, okay. I want you to, See I want to shoot straight. My very first question. Okay. I'm shooting direct. Mm. Tell us, in layman's language, what is success? Mm. The truth about the word success is that Every one of us, we have our different expressions, different meanings, different expectations of what success means. But the general thing is just, um, I can say it's a positive state, you know, a better state that every individual anticipates. So depending on who you are speaking to, someone who grew up lacking physiological needs, which is basic needs of food, water, shelter, you know, um, clothing, when the person is talking about success in the person's future, the person will be talking about being in a state where he or she can afford to eat a decent meal, not necessarily something expensive, okay. right? Um, not necessarily at um, a first-class restaurant, mm -hmm. but just to have access to food. The person will be talking about having access to water, not necessarily uh, for the person to have uh, um, um, bottled water to drink, but at least just have some water, some clean water to drink. Um, if the person is someone who suffered a lot for accommodation, maybe especially in Lagos with the huge cost of living, you know, the person will be talking about having a decent place to stay. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean whether the person is on, um, on the highbrow island or on the mainland or wherever. What the person is just thinking of is having his or her own house, a place to stay. 
So when we look at success generally, it depends on people's present state, you know, for them to, for, to that determines the thinking of what their success is. Look at academics, for example. Um, someone who, out of maybe 10 courses, the person um, has distinction in six courses, and then the person is anticipating success. The person will be saying he wants to have or she wants to have distinction across board. But someone who is maybe just a pass or a credit, just an average student, uh, the person's anticipation for success will just be to, to get better. So You're generally, success mm -hmm. for every human being is seeking to get better, seeking to be at a better status. Even someone who is really rich and wealthy, the many other people are seen to be successful, is probably still anticipating, you know, to own, yes, the person owns the latest car. The person wants to own the latest jet, you know, a private jet. So success, as it were, is individuals anticipating a better state, a better status than where they are at the moment. So but I take a definition of success from a gentleman called John Maxwell, and this has been my own personal all-time definition of success, okay. and it has been my guide as an individual. Hmm. He said in his book, Success Journey, many years ago, that success is first a discovery of purpose, two, growing towards your maximum potential, then three, sowing seeds to benefit others. Again, success is first a discovery of purpose, secondly, growing towards your maximum potential, and three, sowing seeds to benefit others. And if we can look at success through the lens of what John Maxwell said, I think it is a sustainable way to live our lives. Of course, it is also positioning us you know, for, for something better tomorrow, no matter the level that you are, that you're anticipating, mm -hmm. and you want to live your best life ever. I know some people for success is just about the money, but some people success is just about the status, about their position. Mm -hmm. um, some people, um, it's just about the respect that it gets. And we can look at it also from the theory of um, Abraham Maslow, mm -hmm. the hierarchy of needs. needs okay. yeah. So right. um, uh, okay. it's relative. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. It's, it's Based relative. Based on individuals. Yes. Based on, for it's... instance, the, the billionaire, mm. the Japanese billionaire who wants to take his uh, friends to Mars, you know, I mean... Would consider that, would that be, a success after he has after achieved After he has it. achieved that. All right, so, so yeah. from what you've said, um, Champ, um, success is a journey. And su success has to be yeah. sustainable, is a desire, and is an yeah. ongoing thing. It's not a position where you... Yeah. You get to, and that is it. We're static. All right. Um, so, so how how would you, um, you know, relate? You were just touching that at the end of your submission. How would you relate the issue of finance and money? Um, would it be right to assume that success also has to do with, you know, how much money you've stocked up in the bank and all of that? So um, I'm reminded of a nursery rhyme. Um, that says good, better, best. I shall never rest until my good is better and my better best. You know, and these days I remember that rhyme a lot uh, regarding success, regarding my life, because it's saying that wherever you are, it's always about anticipating for more and doing better. Regarding money, money is a strong indicator of success. Okay. Anybody that says that success does not have anything to do with money, uh, perhaps doesn't know what he or she is saying. Money has a lot to do with success. But the challenge is when we limit success to money, success, money is an indicator, but money is not the only indicator of success. In fact, you realize that when people are seeking money and then they find money, then they are now looking for something else. They are looking for a sense of purpose, a sense of fulfillment. You know, so now you have all the money that you need, and you have more than the money that you need, but there's still some hollow, there's still some gap in them, you know, and that's the place of purpose. So which is why in the definition earlier, saying that it begins with that discovery of purpose, so that you are making that money in what you find joy in, in what you find fulfillment in. You know, some people will say success and fulfillment are two different things, right? And then they will say that for success, it has to be money. For fulfillment... Uh, not necessarily money, but you are, you, you are happy doing it. Mm -hmm. And what I say is that, so even if I'm happy doing something and I'm not meeting my bills, my basic needs, mm -hmm. and I cannot even once in a while, you know, enjoy myself based on what I can afford, 
the most likely thing that will happen to me is that that sense of fulfillment that I think I'm having, that happiness I'm having will start to deplete gradually. Yeah. And you see, you don't, the last thing you want to, uh, the last kind of person you want to be with, to be around, to be your friend, to be your spouse or to be around is a broke person who claims fulfillment, <laughs> right? A broke person that claims fulfillment. That's the last kind of person you want to be around. Yeah. So it is important that in our understanding of success, we know that money is important, money is key, also know that money is not all about it, but money is an indication of it. In fact, in our society, and by our society, I'm not just talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about the world. Money makes the world go round. That thing is true, and it's just true. There's no way you want to put it. There's no how you want to deny it. Mm. In fact, if there's no money, uh, the three of us won't be on this show this morning. It's because there's money to, to put the light on. It's because there's money for the data. It's because there's money for... See the beautiful, amazing clo um, clothing that you're wearing, madam? Yes. You know, it's because there's money. I actually to complimented value it now, her this morning. <laughs> dollars of what but let us not go there yeah. you know so that we don't audit we don't audit the account so money is important yeah but it is not just about money okay okay so wow. really good better best i shall not rest until <laughs> i do my best now imagine imagine <laughs> let's not turn the coin let's turn the coin the other way does it then mean that a poor man is condemned a poor man cannot be regarded as being successful yeah? Mm. Mm. A poor man being so, someone who does not have cash. Mm. Yes. Okay. So I remember reading some time ago that there was a man who was uh, very wise and his wisdom saved a country, but he died poor. Mm. A man, very wise, his wisdom saved the country, but he died poor. Mm. A poor man is not condemned. If anybody that is poor right now, it is important to know that you can make good of your life. So, and it doesn't matter how old the individual is. You know, some people will say once they are grandpas or grandmas, mm -hmm. then they think that is, that is all about life, that they cannot achieve something new, that they cannot start something new, something different. Mm -hmm. So no matter how old you are, if you are regarded as poor, if you accept the state that you are poor, that's even another kettle of fish. You know, if you accept the state that you are poor, it's about seeking ways to work out your wealth. It's about seeking ways to improve on yourself. Because you see, no matter how you do it, no matter how wise you are, no matter what you think you know, there are certain places you cannot get to without money. Mm. There are certain people that will not listen to you without money. Mm. So if you want to maximize your potential, if you want to grow your purpose, mm. if you want to become successful as you should be, it's important to pay attention to legitimate ways of making money. Mm. I don't believe that any individual is meant to be poor. Yeah. You might have found yourself in a poor state, but you have the capacity to work your way out of poverty into success. Okay. Um, you know, on this show, you, um, the month of February, we did a lot about family and relationships sure. and all that. And bottom line, um, we arrived at perception we arrived at what happens in this brain, you know, and um, vision, purpose, you said it, and all of that. Now, can we tie this to, because if you said a poor man once died poor, but he had some substance that was able to save the world. And I'm thinking, couldn't he have used that substance to get rich, you know, if, if money he needed to be a part of it for him to be successful. Uh, that's what's been going in my head. But right now, um, let's, let's just look at the principles of success. Can you break them down for us? Just a few of them because we don't have too much time right now. Just a few pr principles okay. of success that somebody can begin to run with at this point and get better. Okay. Okay, great. And let me take it from my definition of success that I borrowed from uh, John Maxwell. Sure that say that success is first a discovery of purpose. I think the first principle of success is even knowing what it is that you want to do, knowing what you are meant to be doing, mm. right? Um, a lot of people will say that they are serial entrepreneurs, and I wonder how much success you are having across board because knowing what to do and then focusing on it helps you to broaden your horizon. You see, I believe that um, um, multiplicity, duplicity is distraction. 
right? So the first principle is knowing what it is you are meant to be doing. And that's a place of purpose. Discovering what it is that you are meant to be doing. What trade you are meant to be engaged in. What product you are meant to be selling to which audience. And then you create it and then you sell it to the audience. What service you are meant to be offering to a particular customer. You discover it and upon the discovery, then you start offering the service to those who can pay for it, right? So the beginning of it is the discovery of what you are meant to be doing. So when we hear purpose, we should not just theorize it. We should not just think it's just some some word, some bogus word out there. It is simply what you are meant to be doing, why you're doing what you're doing. And once you discover what you're meant to be doing, first principle, the second one is stay glued to it, stay focused on it, stay there. Um, you may not start getting results immediately, but you will get results eventually. And the way to get results is to stay there. Now, while you're staying there, another principle is flexibility. Now, this flexibility is knowing that you've discovered where you are meant to go. You've discovered what you are meant to do, but how you will get there may not always be what you have in mind ab initio. So flexibility is that you are opening your mind, you are opening your mind to learning, to receiving data that will guide you into knowing how to tweak your, your process. You know, so you might have thought that the way um, to sell the particular product you've designed is to take it to a particular market, identified market A. Along the line, you realize that that market does not even want it again. And so flexibility is now you creating maybe other products that that market will want or creating other markets that will desire your product. So I've talked about the principle of, focus, of, of purpose. Yeah. I've talked about the principle of focus. I've talked about the principle of flexibility. And the fourth principle I want to talk about is the principle of teachability, which is remaining teachable. You see, a lot of times, especially people who are even successful to, a, to an extent, one of the biggest issues that people who are successful to, to a level they have is because they are successful. You know, somebody said that people fail not because they aimed and they miss, but because they aimed at something and they hit that thing. So because they hit the thing, then they park because they assume that now they have achieved some success. Whereas we remember our rhymes of good, better, best. I shall never rest until my good is better yeah. and my better best. Yeah. So being teachable, opening your minds to learning more. And you can learn from anybody from anywhere. You can learn from young people. You can learn from old people. You can learn from people of your religion. You can learn from people who are not from your religion. You can learn from people of your tribe, of your race. You can learn from people who are not of your tribe, of your race. Because also, I remember there was a conversation about perception earlier in, 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 in this session. You know, because also we limit ourselves uh, by, by certain things because we think that the people that can teach us something must look a particular way. So you don't want to rob yourself of opportunities to learn from any individual, no matter the differences that you may have. And so whether you think, whether you, think you are poor or you are defined poor, the more you continue to learn, the more enlightened you become, the more you start to see things differently, the better it is for you to now understand your purpose, mm. to stay focused because it takes persistence to stay focused yeah. and then remaining flexible. So consistency, consistency really, just keep going, mm -hmm. just keep going. Just yes. keep going. Right. Um, this is like going back to school for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Champ, uh, I was going to ask you what Champ is all about, but I think you have expressed that in so many ways. Yes. yes now, yes, I have. would want you to explain to us, because there are, there are times when we use certain words and terminologies, and we really don't know how deep or shallow these words are. True. For instance... Being successful, right? And then the word success itself. Because it appears, it would appear as if success itself is at the end of the, you know. At when the you end, have gotten there. At, when you have gotten there. Being successful is... Is, is still moving. John, you right? are shaking on this. I'm shaking. So can Champ tell us? <laughs> so, so I want Champ to distill it for us. Being successful okay. and success, what are, they the, what, same are they the same thing? Okay, okay great. Um, like you said, a lot of people think success is a destination, but it is not a destination. It is a journey. And so we can be successful every day of our lives. 
And how do we become successful every day of our lives is waking up every day and know what you are meant to do on that day. Remember earlier, we talked about principle of purpose, of focus, of flexibility, and of, and of teachability. So the principle of purpose is you wake up one day and you know what you are meant to achieve that day. And then how do you know what you are meant to achieve that day, right? Is by thinking through you know, your career, thinking through your life, knowing what's your end goal, what you anticipate to see in the future, and working every day towards that future. Then writing down what it is you want to achieve that day, that week. In fact, let's start from a week. Writing down what you want to achieve that week. That's your purpose for the week. Yeah. That is what you want to focus on on the week. Next principle of focus is now that that thing you've written down that you want to achieve that week, that is what you should have absolute focus on that week, right? To ensure that you don't allow distractions to take you off course yeah. from that thing that you you are meant to achieve. If at the end of one day, you look through what you said you will achieve in that one day, and out of 10 things, for example, you say you want to achieve, you can cross out a number of things that you achieve, you have succeeded that day, right? And then up to the next day. So the things that you could not achieve day one, you can move them to day two with the goals of day two, you know, and ensure that you stay focused, you remain flexible, you remain teachable as well towards that achievement. You see, success is like little drops of, little drops, little drops that makes the mighty ocean. One action today, one action tomorrow, also one in action today, one in action tomorrow, because many times we only talk about what we do. We don't talk about what we don't do as well. Yeah. There are many times that what we don't do is why we are not successful. There are many times that what we do is why we are not successful. You know, so success and being successful is making sure every day of our life counts. Making sure that you achieve something every day. So being right. successful is the journey that takes you to success. Mm. Okay, champ. Um, there's something I came across talking about success okay. being a lonely road. And again, I ask, <laughs> how can something so beautiful so desirable, you know, be put in that quote, a lonely path. Mm. Please explain. Mm. Well, in my perspective, um, there is a sense of, there could be, there could be a sense of loneliness, you know, on the journey of success. Um, and one of the reasons that happens is, one, uh, when the person that is, forging ahead is not working with a team. When the person is, the person has watched some movies and has seen how, you know, one of my favorite movie character, James Bond, mm -hmm. how he can do everything all by himself. Or how another movie character, Jackie Chan, you know, can fight and then nothing touches. I mean, no, no, no. He fights, then you can see that he has blood, he has uh, punches touching him. Mm -hmm. So those two characters, they are people we can learn from regarding loneliness on this success journey. Mm -hmm. An individual that thinks he wants to be or she wants to be self-made, yes, will find loneliness on the journey, often. Anyone that works with a team will find loneliness less often. So there's the time because you are ideating, you're thinking about it, the responsibility lies on you. When things are working, you celebrate with the team. When things are not working, you take personal responsibility. Of course, still work with the team at the same time. So there is the sense it's that those times that you could just be alone thinking, mm. right? But it is always important that you rely on people, that you latch on people. I believe that there is nothing like a self-made individual. It is fallacy. It's a fallacy to say any individual is self-made because somebody must have bought your product or somebody must have paid for your service. Somebody must have created the product or the service that you are offering that made you to have that money. Somebody must have signed a document somewhere that ensure that you had access to funding. Yeah. Somebody must have signed a document somewhere that ensure you had access to market, you know, and access to other resources that you may need. Somebody must have done recruitment for you. A team must have worked for you somewhere. So it is important that in our conception of success that we realize that it is not just about us, it is a journey. And if you want to go fast, according to a quote, go alone. But if you want to go far, 
You need to go with people. You need to work with people yeah. to ensure that you reduce that tendency of loneliness. It could be wow. burdensome that you are carrying something heavy, <laughs> you know, that you have a vision that you are trying to pursue, mm. but it is lighter when you work with people. And please let us drop our egos as we are thinking of success and humble ourselves and work with people. Wow. Thank you so much, wow. um, Salami. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. That was bam. Ground breaking <laughs> into the subject matter success. Thank you so much, Abiola Salami, for the wonderful lecture. I would say that you've given to us. We've learned so much, haven't we, John? Yeah, of course we have. All yes, right. Have. Thank yes. you so much once Certainly. again. Thank you for being a part of the show Having this morning. Okay. All right. Bye for now, Salami. And thank you once again, John. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, the true meaning of success, you know. <laughs> from all he has from said. From all he has said, uh, definitely goes beyond having a lot of money, tangibles, affluence. Rather, it's more about living a happy, fulfilled life and how much you're able to make your community and the world a better place for everyone. Yeah. And so are, the, there, are there principles of success that can be learned? He told us, yes, we can learn how to be successful. Are there also principles that can be cultivated or acquired? He said, yes, also. Well, we move on to our second guest, who will fill in the missing lines in some of the areas that we haven't um, asked. And then when the second guest joins us, he will be able to answer all of those questions. So it's right about that time uh, where we invite you to please help us welcome Tadi Cash. He's a legendary closer and master investor. He's co-founder, Weeper Africa Limited author, and one who believes that success is a system and not a secret. We'll take a short break then. Okay. And when we come back, we'll meet our we'll guests. show you. Yeah. All right. Don't go away, please. <laughs> 